let's look at the timelines of where the history of food manufacturing fits in here. So we have on the left side the timeline that I, I just went over with just general um, the, the general timeline of quality management and quality control. On the right hand side in, in yellow print, I put up the main events in the history of food manufacturing. So many of you are familiar with The Jungle, the book written by Upton Sinclair. Um, it's a great read if you haven't read it yet. I just finished it myself two nights ago. Um, the outcome of that book being published, since that book really exposed the country to a lot of the practices going on in the industry, um, we had these muckraking journalists um, that would uh, expose the country to the vivid detail of the hazards of the marketplace, of um, the many preservatives that companies were putting in their foods before validating that those preservatives were safe for consumption. Um, this resulted in the 1906 Food and Drugs Act and its enforcement. Um, the chief chemist of the Bureau of Chemistry, uh, his name was Doc Dr. Wiley, um, captured the country's attention with his hygienic table studies. Uh, he, would, he would get some human subjects and expose them to these foods with these common preservatives used in foods, and he would demonstrate the health effects of those preservatives. And it got a lot of attention because he showed how unsafe those products were. So in 1906, we really got exposed to um, some of the negative um, practices going on in industry. And this act was the, the biggest change, the biggest food uh, regulation, food quality management um, regulation at the time. Uh, so as the country began following and um, being, as, the, as processors and manufacturers focused on being compliant with that act, uh, through the 1930s, we had many food, process, food, food processes invented. And this was when products like mayonnaise, canned tuna, corn oil, uh, frozen foods were developed, also processed cheese and candies. And you can think about how this fit with the expansion of, of manufacturing and those factories, the, the mass production of food um, on the broader timeline of quality management. So, um, and, and this prompted, as, as manufacturers became so big, it, it prompted um, a big focus on how do we implement quality specifically within the food industry. Um, through the 1930s, there was another generation of these muckraking journalists and consumer protection organizations that um, kept pushing on Congress to enforce stricter regulations and they, they kept exposing the country to what was going on in these big factories. And the outcome of that was the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938. So now we had a new law. And the reason we mention all of these, both of these regulations, is because it touches on a quality management concept that we'll address later on in the webinar. And, and that is a, having a focus on the customer. Uh, as you... Um, can imagine these companies that were adding ingredients that were not exactly approved as safe ingredients and um, pushing their manufacturing to this big scale, um, many times were focused on other priorities than serving the customers. And at this point, I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Helen Joyner to discuss terminology and quality management. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about this slide here. Um, so the second half of this timeline shows since the 1950s what has happened in the food manufacturing um, timeline. In 1963, Codex Alimentarius was formed. This is a commission um, that was formed in 1963 by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. It was joined by the World Health Organization in 1962 before its initial um, um, commission in 1963. And this organization, um, its main goals were to protect the health of consumers and ensure fair practices in the international food trade. It's recognized by the World Trade Organization as the international reference point 
for the resolution of disputes concerning food safety and consumer protection. So this was the first standard that we had at a worldwide level. And since since then, and in the 1960s and the 1970s, we had a big outbreak of Clostridium botulism outbreaks that resulted in safe canning methods. So we started developing the knowledge for how to implement quality at these manufacturing levels. And then if you're familiar with the history of HACCP, then you know that that came about in the 1980s. And this was the first time we really had a management system developed specifically for the food industry. It's a food safety management system. And since then, since 2000, we had the Global Food Safety Institute, which took the international standards developed by Codex Alimentarius in the 1960s and updated them for the supply chain. And this was a result of the globalization of the food industry, where we have many companies buying products from different companies, and they needed a standard to audit and evaluate against specifically for management in the food industry. And we won't touch on the Food Safety Modernization Act in this webinar. Um, those rules are still forthcoming, but um, needless to say that it emphasizes the importance of implementing a top-notch quality management system. 